Hi, today we're going to show you how to periodically maintain your swamp cooler. Mine, I'll be starting it up from new for the season. Right now, as you can see, I still have plastic on the inside of the doors. I had mine winterized for the season. Mine is a side draft swamp cooler, so we're going to start by going ahead and removing the doors. On this side draft, we only have three doors. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the swamp cooler doors. Depending on how your swamp cooler has been maintained, it might be difficult to remove your doors if it was not maintained very well due to scale buildup and minerals that build up in the swamp cooler over time. Okay, we've went ahead and removed the door. We'll go ahead and remove the two additional doors and we'll start removing the pads. To make it easier to work on, we're going to go ahead and work on our swamp cooler door on a table. We're going to go ahead and remove the wire brackets first. We're going to go ahead and pull it up here and here on both sides. And we'll continue that step all the way along until no more brackets are on the swamp cooler door. Now that we have removed the wire brackets holding the swamp cooler pad on the door, we'll go ahead and remove the swamp cooler pad. Which you can see in this circumstance, the swamp cooler pad comes out pretty easy. Depending upon how you, your swamp cooler has been maintained, you might have to pry the pad out of there. With all the scale and mineral buildups, it will stick to the door. Now that we have the swamp cooler pad out, we're going to want to go ahead and inspect our door for any damage or louvers that might be possibly bent the other way. So far our door looks pretty good on both sides. If your door is in poor condition, you might be able to get away with sanding it down and possibly painting it. After we've inspected our door, we're going to want to inspect our distributors to make sure that they're all properly open so they get water flow. If yours happen to be closed, you can pry them open by sticking a flat blade screwdriver in it and turning it. Now we could go ahead and install our swamp cooler pads. A lot of times when you go to get your swamp cooler pads at your local home improvement store, they won't always have the exact size. Mine is 32 by 36 long. The pads I was able to find in the improvement store are 32 wide by 40 long, so I will fold it over on the top and bottom of the door before putting back in our wire brackets. Now we have the swamp cooler pad laid out over the door. We're ready to go ahead and install the swamp cooler pad. It's always a good idea to make your folds on the top and bottom if your swamp cooler pads are longer on the inside fold it over this way and tuck it under so you don't have any water leaks on the outside we're going to go ahead now and tuck the swamp cooler pad into the door as you can see we've installed the swamp cooler pad be very careful on the top where the distributors are located that you tuck it as far underneath the distributors as possible that will help avoid water leaks on the outside of the swamp cooler now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall our swamp cooler metal brackets that will hold the pads in place. Go ahead and repeat this process for all your doors. Now that you've went ahead and installed your swamp cooler pads, you're ready to clean out the inside of the swamp cooler. I usually take a leaf blower and blow out the whole inside of the swamp cooler. If you have a shop vac, you can go ahead and thoroughly vacuum out the inside of the swamp cooler. All right, now that you've blown out the swamp cooler or vacuumed out with the shop vac, you want to go ahead and use a tool that is a snake, also called an auger, to rot out your distributor lines. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and rot out the distributor lines in the swamp cooler. They're all located in the top of your swamp cooler. We're going to go ahead and take the snake and insert it in the hole as far as you can get it in there. And you'll want to go ahead and move the snake back and forth several times and repeat this step for all the distributors on your swamp cooler. Now that you've gone ahead and rotted out all of your distributors, it's a good idea to do it every few weeks. That will help from buildup on the distributors and restricting water flow. Now that we've completed that, we're going to go ahead and remove our belt. Be very careful not to pinch your hands inside the pulley while removing it. Okay, now that we've removed the belt, we're going to go ahead and install the new belt. We'll start with installing the new belt by putting it on the motor pulley and then putting it on the squirrel cage pulley and slowly turning it. 
being very careful not to pinch your fingers inside of the pulley. Since we're starting up our swamp cooler new from the beginning of the season, we're going to go ahead and reinstall our drain plug here and tighten it down as necessary. After we've completed that step, we're going to want to go ahead and examine our swamp cooler float. As you can see here, it has quite a bit of buildup. We're going to change that, but that will be on a later on video. Now that that is complete, we're going to go ahead and lubricate the bearings on the swamp cooler. On my swamp cooler, I have bearings on both sides and I'm able to lubricate them with zoom spout oil. So we'll go ahead and open up this right over here and we will lubricate it with zoom spout oil until it's filled. It's a good idea to repeat this every month or so. Okay, now that we've went ahead and lubricated our bearings, we're ready to fill it up with water. We're going to go turn on our water supply. Now our swamp cooler is filling up. We're going to go ahead and let it fill up and then we're going to start it up. While my swamp cooler is filling, this is a good time to show you. I have mine wired with a 120 volt thermostat, so I set it for my desired temperature. When it achieves that, the unit will automatically shut off so it does not continuously run. All right, as you can see, we've went ahead and started our swamp cooler pump up. And now we're checking our water. We have pretty much even water flow all the way around after cleaning all the distributors. The next thing to check on setup is your water pump to make sure that you do have a water bleed connected to it so you're able to drain a little bit of water out of the unit as it's running. I have mine connected to an irrigation tube going into a five gallon bucket. I restrict the amount of water that it lets out per day. I usually drain about five gallons or so. Depending upon where you're located, you might want to drain more or less depending upon the condition of your water. After you've completed all these steps, your swamp cooler is ready for the season. It's a good idea every week or so to keep an eye on your distributors to make sure they have proper water flow and your water pump bleed is properly draining your designated amount of water per day. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click on the link below to visit our website. Thank you.